Hi, YouTube. Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 to 26. So I gotta find that myself. 2 Timothy 2, 14 to 26. No, it was here when we sent it. Find that myself. Um, before we pray, just briefly what kind of the, the plan of attack is. Um, God willing, we'll do this today. Then next Sunday, we'll do 2 Timothy 3. Then um, the following Sunday, which is September 4th, is that the right date? Um, we will do 2 Timothy 4, which ends our study of 2 Timothy. And then, per the discussion we had a few weeks ago, beginning uh, September 11th, which is the kickoff of Sunday School, all that, we're going to do... Um, we're going to do a study on biblical interpretation, which I have tentatively, tentatively entitled um, uh, Learning How to Inter Interpret the Bible from Jesus, or Learning Biblical Interpretation from Jesus. So we're, um, rather, than, rather than teach uh, biblical interpretation based on semi-abstract abstract principles, we're going to we're kind of going to go the other, we're going to look at, uh, my intention is to look at narratives and see how Jesus interprets, and then we'll kind of, my intention is, is then to kind of lead towards a, a little guide uh, for, for people, so rather than start with the guide and go the other way, is to kind of dive into the scriptures and see how, see how Jesus uh, does the interpreting. Interpret, interpreting. Good gravy. All right. Uh, does everybody have a seat that needs one? Okay. All right. Again, you should have a study guide on 2 Timothy 4. If 2 Timothy 2, 14 to 26. And let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word and the opportunity to be back in your word. And so we pray, as we so often do, that you would send your spirit because you have promised that your spirit will work through the word to lead us into all truth. And having established us in truth, help us then, Lord, to walk in, to live in. In this we pray, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. Okay, so I printed for you, and this is this is again, this is the this the study guide for 2 Timothy 2, 14 to 26, from the Life by His Word Bible studies that was published. Um, contemporary along the same time with the, the New Luther Study Bible. But so what I'd like to do is I want to read through this whole section and and then go back and do the study. But I've got a few things I want to talk about because like, I did a few little word study things that you might find interesting. And so I need somebody to do. Let's do fourteen. Uh, through 19, do I have a taker for 14 through 19? And then, why doesn't somebody else just do 20 through the end of the chapter? Do I have another do I have another taker? Okay, we'll get you over here. All right, so Sharon, I'm going to give you the mic so everybody can hear. There you go. Remind them of these things. Charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one who approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. To avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymnus and Panitus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection was already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some. But God's firm foundation stands bearing this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and that everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Okay. And now we've got... Uh, 
20 through the remainder? Yeah. Now, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Have nothing to do for, with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them endurance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, after being captured by him to do his will. Okay. Well done. Playing whenever that voice comes over a microphone. I, I think of... Uh, NPR. Uh, uh, no, I think of, well, he came with us last year to the Dick and Carol's condo in Florida, and the condo has karaoke night, and uh, and Blaine signed up to do the Grinch song, huh. <laughs> right? and, that, right? and that bass voice came out, and this waitress just went. <laughs> she caught she she it, you know, and they were they had just gotten married and this this waitress heard her heard his voice. You know, oh, wow. he's a media. Yeah. <laughs> oh, huh? well, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, you should totally do voiceovers. Yeah. Uh, all right. Before we get into our before we get into our study, I was I was doing I was doing some word studies on the, the initial part of this this lecture, this section of the scripture, and sometimes the, these can be an exercise in, in silliness, but sometimes there's some nuance that's brought out, and I just wanted to draw your attention. Our, our reading begins with verse 14, and it says, so if you have your Bible open, it says, remind them of these things. Now, the them takes us back to 2 Timothy 2. Right? And what you have heard from me, Timothy, in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach. So the them is referring back to this, who are the faithful men. This is a reference to pastors. right? So remind them of these things. And then the question is, well, what are, what are these things? And that's also the stuff that follows that. Um, that that a, a soldier of Christ is going to suffer, that a soldier of Christ shouldn't be entangled in civilian pursuits, right? because he's got to focus on the Lord. Um, then there's the athlete analogy in verse 5. right? The athlete competes according to the rules. right? So uh, the pastor lives within the boundaries set by Scripture. Um, he, earns, he earns his wages from the gospel. That's the tail end of verse 6. And then there's the stuff about Christ. Above all, remember Christ, who's risen from the dead, this is this gets repeated um, again and again because it's pretty important. The res and that comes up a little bit later in our reading, right? Um, the resurrection of the dead. Uh, he is the offspring of David. Why would that be important? That Jesus is the offspring of David. I can think of two main things. Yeah. The humanness of him, right? He's right. He, so. And yeah, and and so he is, um, he is the God Man, promised from the line of David, right? As as the Lord had promised, uh, his ans Jesus ancestor, uh, David, that he would establish an eternal throne. That eternal throne obviously didn't come with Solomon, who had his own issues, or Absalom, um, or, or or any of those after, right? So, so remember, so the, the these things are the suffering that the pastor is like a soldier, that all this stuff, and that, you know, above all the, the, those things about Christ, then his resurrection is, uh, his, he is the offspring of David, um, and the same, right? And again, this is a number, we talked about this 
the same. If we died with him, that's a reference to what? If you were in worship today, baptism, baptism right? If we died with him, because that's what baptism leads according to the scriptures. Right? At least according to the scriptures, baptism is a burial and a resurrection. Right? If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. We, call, we, we made the reference to Matthew 10 last week, where Jesus says, if, you, if anyone confesses me before men, I will confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will deny before my Father in heaven. Key verse for us for confirmation. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Right? He is, this calls to attention amongst others, uh, Ephesians 5, where Jesus is the perfectly faithful heavenly bridegroom. Right? And we are the sometimes unfaithful bride, often unfaithful brides. Right? Yeah. All right? So now back, so back to first thing. Remind them, remind the pastors that are appointed of these things and charge them before God. Um, not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Here's an interesting little word study. Um, the word that is translated simply as charge, and when we hear this in context, what do you think of? Charge. Charge him. Charge them. Yeah. Entrusted. Entrusted. Okay. What else? If you are charged with something, you are entrusted. Any other thoughts? Oh yeah, you could be accused. Yeah, there's <laughs> that's right. You could be the the word here. Ooh, my thing is floating away. All right, should I move this back? Is this okay? All right. I want to make sure I get my spelling right, but I was interested when I saw this. All right, I'm going to write. I'm going to write it and transliterate the Greek here for you. Because you're going to recognize something. You need to move this. This is the Greek word that, that is translated simply as charge. Do you see something in the middle of this? The word for witness. I thought we were talking about Luther. What's that? Marty. Marty? Marty. 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 Yeah. I didn't catch the R. On, yeah, please go see your optometrist. Um, <laughs> so, when you see witness, a wit this is literally this is the Greek word for witness. Is martyrapo is, is the word witness, and so dia in, as a prefix intensify, intensifies it. Right, so. Um, I just I just thought this was interesting. Remind them of these things and charge them, right? And I think, you know, entrust. But when you see it this way, it intensifies it, doesn't it? Um, and that's what that's what the prefix is designed to do. It's where some advantage is to having a little bit of, a little bit of Greek to talk about this stuff. Well, it, I, I think I heard Siobhan whisper, "Die a martyr." Die a martyr, right? Uh, die a martyr. Um, but so, so you get, it, especially, you know, we've just had in the previous section, we've had the soldier analogy. The pastor is a soldier, and now he's he's charged. Um, when you consider the soldier analogy, we might think of now some other words. Um, that because in trust has it, but. You know, what are the words we use when we're sending a man off into battle? Or he has, he's under orders. He's, he's, he's charged. He's commissioned. Um, so there, there you can see there's, right? Remind them of these things and charge them. Commission, commission them before God not to, and then it says, 
quarrel about words. How about, about appointed to complete command? Well, it, yeah, it's, it's an some, appointment, you know. It, he is, yeah, you are, I mean, appointment would be another. Um, I mean, it, so what, what we're doing here is, this, this is part of the challenge of translation. Um, and anybody who's, you know, if you've ever studied a, another language, and if you acquire some level of <coughs> fluency in a, di in a different language, and then you said about the work of translating, you know that some things are, are really hard to render, render kind of word for word, and that's what we just kind of discovered in looking at this. Um, so there was the quarrel about words. In the Greek, there's one word for it. I thought this was interesting. Um, you're going to notice something. The word is, what's the word in Greek? Some of you know this. Logos is word. Okay? All right? So it's logo in this. So log, logos. Uh, sorry, get my handwriting. Logos is word. And McKay is hate or dispute. So, my, this is my sense, is my sense is, is that when we, when we read this, remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, we think of, when we, when my, this is my sense, and you could correct me, my sense is when we think of quarrel, um, we think about two neighborhood kids, or you know, you go to the early childhood center, and there's a single toy that two kids are having, you know, you think, right, that's a quarrel. Um, this, however, intensifies it, doesn't it? So again, in the, in the larger context that we're looking at, right, the pastor is, the pastor is a soldier who's been commissioned, appointed, um, and not, not to word fight um, in the, the larger context here is going to be on unnecessary things verse 15 do your best to present yourself before God as one as one approved right uh, this also is interesting when I looked at the Greek do your best uh, do your best to present yourself as one to God the word for do your best has a sense of hasten, hurry up, right? Um, so there's a right you, when you bring that nuance out. There's an urgency to this. Right? You you get you get this sense in the context. There is a there's there's in the there's a greater a seriousness to this and an, and an urgency uh, to this and a and a deep and abiding importance of this. Um, do your best to present yourself to God um, as one approved. Uh, the word for approved means to stand beside, more literally. If you're approved, you're one. So, um, so think again. We're, think the soldier analogy. He's called right in this case. The pastor is called, as it were, to stand alongside the Lord. As right, present yourself to God. Right, stand alongside God as one who is approved. Right. Um, then it says, "One approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed. Who what then? Rightly handles." Um, 
again, there's, and I'll, I'll end my Greek study after this and get us into it, because I don't want to get us too into the words, too into the weeds here, but again, you, you can see some stuff. Rightly handling is literally, does that look familiar? Orthos is right or straight, as in orthodoxy, right? Dox, doxis is praise. Orthodoxy is right praise. Okay. So the word, the word, the word here for rightly handling is ortho. Unta, that comes, this comes from the, the Greek word temno, which means cut or divide. So when it says rightly handle, could also, also be translated as, your, your, some of your Lutheran ears are going to go up, rightly dividing the word, the word of truth, right? Um, it has a sense of right, this is this is delicate that you are a you're not a meat hacker, but you are careful with your knife. You've heard that anal analogy before. You're rightly you're you're rightly rightly divided. Okay. So again, remind them of these things. Charge them before God not to. Not to be word fighting, as it were, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers, or literally kind of destroys them. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker has no need to be ashamed, but rightly handling, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. I just thought those were some interesting, those are some interesting things. It it intensifies what's going on here, and again, if we, we know the context, Paul's going to die. He knows it. Right? He, he, he knows that this is going to happen. This is, to the best of our knowledge, his last letter. And so there is a, there is a forthrightness and an intensity and, and a recognition that Timothy is, in many respects, to carry on the work that he's been doing. Okay. Um, what is, by the way, it's. Uh, I'm going to skip the because we talked about quarrel about words. Well, what do you and what do you think that means? Let's not pass over it in question number one, which has us look at a bunch. What is um, when it says, "Don't quarrel about words." In the larger context, what do you think that's about? Getting lost in the weeds. Getting lost. Sometimes, in sometimes you can spend too much time looking for the perfect word, and you've already got the point across. Yeah. And I, I think of, for example, um, we can belittle certain doctrines, but there are some people that get all bent out of shape about when, trying to figure out when exactly Christ is coming. I mean, there, there are people, I mean, I mean, millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of words have been spent over the, over the centuries trying to figure out and discern when exactly Christ and, you know, whether Saddam Hussein is this, or you know, I mean, or whether you know whether Donald Trump is this, or whether Joe Biden is this, we get we get all bent out of shape over you know whether this is prophesied here um, when that's rather obscure when G when Jesus is really quite simple typically Jesus is quite simple typically who says I don't even know when the end will come only the Father does. So be watchful. Be ready. You know. Um, so rather than rather than trying to spend all this time trying to figure out when exactly it's to be, be faithful. Be ready. Attend to the scriptures. Put oil, have the oil of faith in your lamps. Um, so right, this is what I, when I think quarrel about words. Well. You know, Jesus, this may, this is, all right, and we're going to write this big book, we're going to do all this movie about it, and I think Jesus is going to come back right here, which I think is, if not an utter waste of time, pretty darn close to it. 
um, when how about rather than spending all that time to figure out when Jesus is coming back, go serve at the food pantry and help. Go serve. Go serve this. Go serve it. You know something. Yeah. How many denominations when you listen to the pastors are using a text to prove their point, and it, the words are different than the word. Can we? Yeah. Yep. Well, they are. I'm, the, I'm talking the word. Yeah. This is different than words. And we're going to get to that. So and Pat's saying, stick to the fair. text. It's yeah. It's in, and well, here, do not present as one of the do uh, here. Uh, do you rest to present yourself as one approved? The pastor is expected to be approved by God. Because, and we have reasons for that. You have a different education than I do as a nurse. We, we don't think the same way, but we respect the office sure. that what is said then works within us and we get into the word and we wait in. And, and that pastor is literally the, the, is called to stand alongside God and with his word. Michael. Oh, uh, you know, Paul writes to the letters. Oh, I'm going to try to give it these yields. Um, I think if I a young man's game, I was guilty of it because I was a dean of chapel. And oh, because you were the dean of chapel back yeah, in the day. Yeah. When, when uh, I was younger, I would listen to what they said, and I'm like, well, you're right, boss. You know, <laughs> and, uh, There's I'm nothing cool. quite as dangerous as a first year seminary student. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine there's a certain analogy to a first-year medical student, first-year law student, you know. Um, hey, I know a few words, and now I got it all put together here, right? Yeah, enough to be dangerous, no doubt. Um, how about irreverent, irreverent babble? What do you, what is irreverent babble? False word. Can be. The expression of thoughts without a foundation. So here, the, these words, um, these words in in the Greek, like this, this the the original Greek word here has the sense of of vain or vanity. That is, you know, something that's there's nothing really be there's nothing behind it. Um, you know, this has this has the sense irreverent means basically ungodly. So it's well you said a bunch you said ir irreverent babble you're just you're you're yeah there's a word I'm, I'm trying to think where the reference in the New Testament somebody accused St. Paul of being a babbler um, and uh, golly will somebody find where that is that's at the oh or the Greek philosophers the Africans oh the some of the uh, some of these philosophers were known for spirit. somebody called Saint Paul a babbler, and in that case, the word you're going to like this. Um, so, at the risk of offending some of you, <laughs> you're going to be able to tell what that is when they call Paul a babbler. It's literally spermologus, spewing words. <laughs> I see chuckles around the room, right? Yeah. It's in the New Testament, right? Yeah. Babbler, spewing words, all right? Um, how about avoid, so avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like, what does it say? What? Yeah. Here, here, here says cancer. Yeah. That, yeah. So what is what is what do the rest of you your translations have? Gangrene. Right. Acts 17. Oh yeah. What, what is this babbler saying? That's Paul and Paul in the Areopagus, right in Athens. Yeah. Um, but avoid here. Hold on just a second. But avoid irreverent babble. Right? For lead people into more and more ungodliness and their talk will spread like a green. Yes. Is that what they need to do with the to babble? I don't think so. But I don't know. 
for sure. There was a lot of babbling going on. Yeah, I don't. Um, she asked if that has anything to do with bail. I don't know about that. Um, I'd have to look it up. So irreverent talk, talk that is not rooted in the scriptures, but that is kind of God talk, is actually is likened to what? Not just a disease, a festering. Thank you. That a festering disease. And this is so, um, pop Christianity, I will say it, is gangrenous. Right? Um, if, 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 you're get, if you're getting, if you're getting your, uh, if you're getting whatever you think is cast, uh, you know, think of as Christianity with, with some respect from Oprah. <laughs> That's not solid food. Um, it's 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 not only not it's not only too sweet. Um, it's flat out cancer sometimes, and well, and vain, focused on ourselves. Can be can be absolutely deceitful. All right. So avoid um, foolish, ignorant. Controversies. What do you think you're talking about here? I mentioned one already that I, that I think qualifies here. But what other? What are avoid foolish, ignorant controversies? I, I see this as don't worry about the Old Testament laws that were set forth. Worry about the here and the now. The, the, the love your neighbor as yourself. More than worrying about washing your hands before you. Oh yeah, well that could be yeah because this this is a central part of what because some were some were claiming and this this gets that gets beyond f foolish because sometimes the way the Judaizers presented uh, Paul actually calls another gospel so because the way the way the the attendance to Jewish laws was presented as if, well, you can have faith in Jesus, but you also need to do this. And what that does is it undermines all that Jesus did, actually, in fulfilling the law. We'll talk about this more deeply when we do our, our study of, um, in a little while, of how to study the Bible. That, it is hard to overstate the importance of that passage that we looked at from the Gospel of Luke today, and that to which we frequently refer. Um, but those related passages where Jesus says that he, he has fulfilled the law, that all the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms are fulfilled in him, right? It's all fulfilled in him. Come on in, everybody. Hi there. Just passing through. Come on down. <laughs> All right. All right. So foolish, ignorant controversies. Um, list. So number question number two. What does it say now? List ways that Timothy is to react to such talk. All right. List ways that Timothy is to react to such talk. This, I mean, looking at verse 24 and following in particular. How is Timothy to react to such talk? Yeah? Would it not be to not give credibility to the words he hears? And I'm going to ask you to repeat, so go to the text. What, is, what, is, what does your Bible say? Right? Look at verses 24 and following. Quarrelsome. Right? right? So, the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. That's unnecessary word fighting. <coughs> Right? He must be kind, kind right? able to teach, patiently enduring, this is getting back to some of the stuff, or patiently enduring evil, 25, correcting, with gentleness. correcting opponents with gentleness. And, and the end of 25 in James, and it says, to, uh, to, uh, to, the, uh, to the acknowledgement and the purpose of all this is to lead people is to lead people to repentance. Um, 
For what it's worth, as you probably have observed in me um, uh, and your other pastors before me, when when people when you're under attack, it is difficult, or am I the only person that struggles with this, to be kind, patient, and correcting everything with gentleness. Am I the only one that struggles with that? <laughs> Yeah, correcting with it, you know it calls it calls to mind um, the beatitudes where when Jesus says, "Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth." Me meekness, meekness, meekness is not that's not a word we use typically in English anymore. I think if if we hear it, if if you have any idea what it is, uh, people I think it tends to connote um, some would be little dude. Yeah. Meat. I love that word. Sure. And actually, that's because you know what it means. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the coolest word because it's what I have to apply it to myself regularly. It means broken to ride. It's yeah. Just frustrating term, and it's like a horse that allows the master to be the one to lead it. Right. A, a modern word for that might be a minion. A what? A minion. A minion. <laughs> It's someone who is willing to let the other person guide them in towards uh, to, in this case, God is the, the guide. Yeah. He isn't there a, when, you, when you've when you broken an animal, it's that, isn't there, there's another word that broken that we use for that? I'm trying to think of. Gentle? No. Tamed. Yeah, tamed. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a household that wants to go to the barn. It's going to go to the barn. Unless it's just the right Right. And it allows the master to take that horse into battle. Right. Yeah, so if, if right, meek, so meekness is is not being pathetic. Um, it, it's not timid. It's strength um, under control. There, that, all right, let's do that. Yeah, meekness is strength under strength under control. I like that. Um, and that's 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 helpful because it's not a word typically that we use in English. So um, Paul, Paul tells Timothy, right, again, don't be quarrelsome, be kind, apt to teach. The Lord's servant must be patient, really enduring evil, correcting opponents with gentleness. And then it says, as Bill, Bill brought out, and in this, God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth. And that, is, that is the purpose of all discipline. And quite frankly, any controversy. That uh, that people may be led to repentance, isn't? And again, going back to the gospel reading today, Jesus says, "Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins be proclaimed in His name to all nations." This is the purpose of the whole thing. Christ is calling us to repentance. When Pastor Shockman and I gather for prayer before every worship service. This is, the, almost without fail, this is what we pray for, for ourselves and for those who will hear, that, that the Lord would lead us to repentance and a lively faith in, in Jesus. That means a faith that lives out what it's been taught. That's, you know, that is the whole ballgame. So all this, um, any fight you're in, any conflict you're in, any of you married? Right? Um, and if your purpose in that conflict is just to win, you have already failed. Is that kind of doo -doo -doo, ring a bell? You know, yeah. right? If if you're if you're in an argument with your spouse and you're simply in it to win it, we are, you are already outside the Lord's will. Um, to hold. God's purpose in this is to lead us to repentance. And repentance involves, well, what does repentance involve? Two things. Let's, let's pause there. What? Repentance. I'm going to say basically two things. Yeah. I'm going to use the big word. Contrition. That's sorrow. Or 
sorry. Sorrow over sin. Yep. Right? Um, someone said acknowledge, acknowledgement. What was another word that I heard somebody use? Um, but you know, you are if you're if you're contrite, you are it's it's not like when you were little and you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar and you're sorry you got caught. You know? Um, it's not you're sorry that you got caught. It's your you're you're sorry you, you recognize what you've done, how you've how you've offended, right? So repentance involves contrition and faith. And faith. Now, contrition includes, by the way, the desire uh, to do better. But the desire to do better isn't going to save you. Right. What saves you is Christ um, and His and His forgiveness. So, when we talk, when when the scriptures talk about as here, the whole purpose of any godly discipline is to lead us to repentance, that is to acknowledge our fault, um, to have sorrow, sorrow and, and to trust in Christ for our forgiveness. And so help us, God, then to live in that forgiveness. All right? Um, let's do three. See if we can squeeze this in in our last five minutes. Um, go to verses 20 and 21. Would somebody read those for us? Within a great house... There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purges himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So again, the bigger context here in Second Timothy, Paul is writing Timothy, and this is about his Timothy, the work that the Lord has called Timothy to, to carry on in the development of and encouragement of, placement of pastors. And in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable and some for dishonorable use. In the ancient world, what's the most obvious example of, some, of, uh, of an earthly, but something that is used for, as it were, dishonorable use? Pot. The chamber pot, the potter over here immediately, right? Um, right. So that can be right redeemed, as it were, for as it were for honor for honorable use. So the the house, the household of God, you know, people can be transformed through the work of Christ uh, for use for for honorable use. So and that is set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Um, think about your own household. Right? And, think, and think about yourself. What, what God has done for you in your baptism. You, know, you were called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You were um, forgiven. You are sanctified. What does it mean to be Sanctified. You're made holy. Or you're holy. Or you're set apart. You know, for holy service or God's service. That applies to all of you. Right? You have been, in Christ, sanctified, declared holy. Now, you may get up in the morning and look in the mirror and think, uh, this doesn't look particularly holy. Um, <laughs> you know, or, or smell it, uh, you know, or whatever. But that doesn't, but, but what is, we look to the things not, are, not that are seen, but that are unseen. Right? And what is... While that, that hair may be all jacked up and the breath may be awful, uh, that's also, by the way, a baptized child of God. And that's what the Lord would have you remember when you wake up in the morning. That he has set you apart for a sacred purpose. And that's a good way to start your day. Um, so again, here's what we're going to do. Next week, 
we're going to read, uh, we're going to do 2 Timothy 3. So if you want to read that ahead of time. The following week, we're going to do 2 Timothy 4. So help us God. And then uh, that will bring us to September 11th, which is the Sunday that Sunday school begins. And when the kids are beginning their Sunday school and public school confirmation starts, we will start a new study on learning how to interpret the Bible from Jesus, which I think should be a lot of fun. All right? Um, oh, fun. As we speak, right now, Aiden O'Donnell is being installed as Lutheran school teacher oh. at Trinity and Fresh. Yeah, isn't that fun? So Carrie and, uh, Carrie and a couple of the others ducked out so they could be there. Um, and it was, a, it was a fitting, I sent him a little note this morning um, given what I was up doing word studies at like three o'clock, my brain went off, and that's sorry you got the result of that. Um, and uh, so I sent him a little note this morning. But that's that's pretty fun. And you know it was great. You know two of we have um, that class of well was it St. Paul's class of 2014. This year uh, we had. And still is Sophia Abel, uh, working at an early childhood center. Uh, Elena DeWitz, uh, now as a teacher's apprentice. Um, my son Aiden was in that, all those three kids from that little St. Paul's class were this last year, and Aiden was student teaching here. So that's, it's fun to see. That has been, um, that has been an ambition of mine, if I can dare use that word, uh, for us here. That we be the kind that we would be the kind of healthy church that would produce kids uh, that want to serve the church. I think the Millers are a fine example. Yeah, and the Miller and the yeah, Millers yeah. are a final are a fine example of that as well. Um, and Kate starts at Concordia, um, Chicago, this next week. I thought she was doing that. She's now that changed. Oh, so okay. now she's going down to Chicago. So um, yeah, so that's fine. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word and the admonition, and we pray that you would help us through that word to build one another up in love, and grant us the wisdom by the same word to recognize what are necessary disagreements about words and what are foolish quarrels, quarrels and things. Help us to recognize this in the church and in our homes, that we may lead peaceable and godly lives and serve our neighbors um, in faith and hope and love. This we pray, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great day in the Lord. <laughs>